Hello guys, my name is Erica Harvardon. I'm a certified child sleep consultant with my private practice Babogue. I am the creator of the Sleep Series, which is an online sleep program, all video based uh, around my seven steps to better sleep. And I'm a mum of three. So there is very little that I haven't seen on the sleep front myself with my own crew. Um, and yeah, I kind of bring that to the table when I'm trying to work with families um, in terms of all the things that I've seen. Now, you guys cry out every time I do a Q&A session for what's the best routine for this age range? You know, what's the napping schedule for this age range? And I thought I would try and cover a little bit of those kind of questions in IGTVs over the coming um, weeks and, and months. And today I'm going to look at a guide. Now this is a guide routine uh, for a nine month old. The kind of touch points, the ideals, maybe the little bit of the timings that I would see and that I'd like to see. But remember, children are not robots. They will not always do what the book says. They will not always do what the recommendations say. And that's why I always say this is a guide. And really, as parents, it's up to us to figure out what suits our individual child. So here it goes. I really like families when they're working on sleep to always start the day every day at 7 a.m. So actively waking your baby if they're asleep at 7 a.m. and starting their day with a feed outside of the bedroom. So in a brightly lit living space. And this is part of that box taking of disassociation of feeding from sleep. So this age range of nine months old would be on solids at this stage. So you'd have your breast or your bottle feed first thing in the morning and then maybe within the hour thereafter at some point, you know, around eight o'clock, you would look at having a good solid meal, you know, whatever ticks your box. I always liked to try and start the day for the children with porridge and um, that was always a good one for me. You would probably be looking at the morning nap taking place around half past nine. At this age range, um, the drive for sleep, the hormone releases that need to be there for your baby to sleep would be happening in and around that time frame. So putting them down for a nap at that stage in a darkly lit, a dark room, sorry, darkly lit, a dark room would be preferable and in a cot, not in a buggy. Sorry about that. Um, you would be looking at your baby sleeping somewhere in the region of 45 to 90 minutes at that stage. Some babies need to be actively woken after 45 minutes to an hour during this nap at this age range to safeguard the second more important nap. Um, some babies are able to sleep 90 minutes in the morning and 90 minutes in the afternoon. You need to find the balance with your child. When your baby gets up from that sleep, um, they probably wouldn't be still having a bottle feed or a breastfeed maybe at that stage, even if they're in a structured feeding routine. They probably would be having their lunch at some point around 12 o'clock. I would recommend that the afternoon meal, that 12, maybe 12.30 meal, would be a protein-based dinner style meal. That's what I like to do. I think it's really important. Protein keeps a baby fuller for longer, keeps humans fuller for longer. And if they have that good substantial meal in the middle of the day, it will really, really sustain them. Then you would be looking for them to go down for their second nap at about maybe half past one. Now the rule of thumb, the guide, would be that a baby of this range would probably be able to go three hours between the wake of the morning nap and the start of the second nap. So for example, if baby was awake at half past 10 from the morning nap, then they would be going down at approximately half past one for that second sleep. And what you'd like to see is that baby sleeps 90 minutes to two hours, but is awake from all sleeps by half past three. And at that point of being awake, then another milk feed would be offered. So breast or bottle feed upon waking from that nap in a brightly lit living space not associated with sleep. I'm very repetitive. 
then you would be looking at maybe some lovely outside time, getting them out in the fresh air, go for a nice long walk. And then you would be back home for your five o'clock tea. So tea happening at five o'clock. At this age range, I actually like this to be a carb heavy meal. I'm not a big fan of babies having the protein based meal at the end of the day. Sometimes it can be a little bit harder for them to digest. And I prefer that kind of from 10 months onwards. But if your baby is really tolerant of it, it's not an issue. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, but if you're finding your baby's quite gassy and, you know, kind of a little bit uncomfortable the evening time after a protein based meal, you know, make it more a carb heavy meal. Then you would be looking at them potentially having a bath straight after tea. Um, a bath is not necessarily going to make your baby sleep any better or any worse. But if your baby needs a bath, I would do it straight after tea. I would get them into their jammies and all the rest at that stage and I'd bring them back into a brightly lit living space not associated with sleep and I would give them their last milk feed of the day breast or bottle and um, in that space about an hour to 45 minutes prior to bedtime. So you can see I'm disassociating feeding from sleep entirely here. Um, and then you would be looking at baby going down to bed four to four and a half hours after they woke from that last sleep. So that at this age range, I'd say four hours would be probably be as far as you can push it. But remember, this isn't a target. This isn't the, something that you need to push your baby towards. If your baby is tired three and a half hours after getting up from that last sleep, then put them to bed. Don't push it. Try and figure out their sweet spot. You know, you have to try and figure this out within the frame of your own baby. But that's it in a nutshell. That is my probably ideal or guide routine for a baby of nine months of age. Um, I would generally see a baby at this age not feed at night, but, uh, particularly a bottle fed baby. But if you're breastfed, um, breastfeeding parent, then you may potentially still see a feed at night at this age range. It all depends on the baby. Um, again, I hope you found that useful. If you're looking to find out more about me, check out babo.com.